What's happening guys, my name is Anthony and in today's video I've got another my team episode for you guys This time we are at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix So as you can see we've got the first Pirelli Hot Lap Challenge of the season Which is the average speed zone around Jeddah I do think that these are going to be a lot of fun to go through Especially the first time going through them uh, I highly recommend even if you're not doing the career mode To just go to the Pirelli Hot Lap section and try these out for yourself I do hope that throughout the year they do come out with different conditions Different cars and different tracks just to keep things spiced up you know, so it doesn't get too stale too quickly. Um, otherwise, I think people are going to get pretty bored of it pretty quickly. But I did do this before on the previous build. However, I completely forgot how to drive the McLaren 720S apparently over the course of the past two weeks. Because we did struggle to get this one. I do believe it took like two or three tries. And this was the final try in round two. And we actually managed to get it going into the corner. Um, this corner here is where you're obviously going to lose all the time. So you really need to just try and get your foot on the throttle as quickly as you can. And I was trying to hug the curbing on the right hand side just so that I can carry all that at speed to the end of the speed zone. And we just about managed to do it even though I was drifting wide. So luckily I got the 162.19 which you only need 162.14 to actually get the gold. So luckily uh, we did that. And if you don't know what this actually does, it does give you some cash and it does give you some overall team acclaim I believe just towards your my team. So it does actually serve a purpose in my team instead of it just being there to be there but anyways let's move on from this now we're going to go over to the to the qualifying and the race section of the video i hope you guys do enjoy this video make sure to smash it if you do and if you're new and you want to see more stuff like this subscribe to the channel let's get straight into qualifying okay then guys so as you can see we are currently going into qualifying q1 uh, we've done the average speed zone stuff with the uh, pirelli hot last stuff we've just done practice and now we're going into q1 last race was pretty bad and our qualifying pace was even worse so yeah it's not looking good going into this one but we'll see what we can actually do in qualifying so i'll catch you guys when we're about to start our first lap all right doesn't look as if there's anyone behind us so we could take our time a little bit here but we're about to start our first lap around jeddah and jeddah's a track that i feel pretty decent at so hopefully we do well hopefully by do well i mean we're not in like the bottom two if we can actually get ourselves outside of the bottom two that'll be a, a dub for us right now but here we go first lap the break super early let's have this as a banker right now to see how the car feels and sort of get to grips with it okay tell one turn two weren't too bad again just break a little bit early here just trying to get a feel for the car color sanders a 28 3 is pretty quick okay first sector is a bit meh in all honesty just meh okay to be honest for a banker lap this is not too bad um obviously it's been a bit of a meh lap but Again, with how our car is and where it is and the fact that we're not really able to get much out of these cars. And this is just a banker lap. I'd say it's been alright, actually. I know we're definitely not going to get close to a 28.3. Uh, definitely not getting anywhere near Carlos Sainz time. This is a 30.5. So, yeah, we're roughly about 2.2 .2 seconds away from Carlos. Which, to be honest, does actually sound about, uh, about, about right. Could probably go quicker than that. You can see that my teammate... Oscar has gone quicker, so yeah, I think for now, our aim is just to try and beat our teammate. Okay, here we go. Lando Norris is in last with Mick Schumacher. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm sure that they're going to go faster. I mean, look, even Hamilton is currently in P18, so clearly everyone's still got time on the table. Our teammate's only like a couple thousandths quicker than us, so hopefully that means that the pace is not too bad, actually, because we do have time in this lap. Let's see what we can do. This time I'm going to break a little later going into turn one. Get that turn in early. There we go. Try and be smooth with the throttle. We're up by a little bit. Not too much. Okay, we, we really bottled that end then of sector one there. Yikes. That was actually going to be a decent-ish sector one. But we bottled it at the end and lost a ton of time. So we're now going to have to try and gain all that time in the rest of the lap, which we can do. As you can see right there, we gained quite a lot of time. About two temps. We did use the track a little bit more than we are really supposed to, but you know what? It doesn't matter at this point. There you go. You can see now we've made another temp up. So we've made some decent time up this lap, but sector one is still a bit of a hit or miss here. So for that final lap, we're going to really have to try our best and sweat. See what we can do in the final corner. Can we gain some time? Do gain a little bit of time. It'll be about half a second quicker. Should put us above Hamilton. Just above Hamilton. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, we're just behind Nicholas Latifi. If we can gain 
I think if we can gain a good, say, three to five temps on our final lap, we might actually be able to make it into Q2. All right, here we go. We've got a decent amount of space in front of us. It's just about the space behind us, really. Not really too concerned with it. It's just I hope that whoever's behind us doesn't actually catch us up and impede our lap. But here we go. Final lap. Main time is in sector one. Let's see what we can do. I think it's actually one of the Williams that's behind us. Okay, I was a little bit concerned about that breaking into turn one there. Just because I thought we was going to lock up, but we didn't. And we managed to gain a decent amount of time in that first couple corners. Oh, that was a much better first sector. Look how much we're up. We're up by almost six tenths of a second right now. Oh, we do hit the wall there, but hopefully we didn't get wing damage from that. Just going to risk it. We've got to take liberties if we want to gain the time. Okay, in all honesty, we lost quite a bit of time there, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Just kept the momentum out. We're currently in last, but we're about six tenths up. Come on, we need to have a good final corner exit here. Mm, we don't really gain any time from it. Again, we're half a second up. Where's that going to put us? We did a 29.4. And it puts us in P20. God damn. Okay, you know what, guys? That's actually not too bad, because even though we're only in P20, our goal for this qualifying was to beat our teammate, and we beat our teammate by almost half a second. So, you know what? I'm going to take that. It shows that we've got some decent pace around here, and few mistakes few retirements that could happen in the race it could mean that we might be able to get ourselves up a little bit further in the grid than we were in the previous race at bahrain bahrain is one of my weaker tracks i'm hoping that at jeddah we can actually do something here so here we are then, welcoming you today to one of the jewels of the Arab world, Jeddah, one of the biggest cities in Saudi Arabia, second only to Riyadh, gateway to Mecca, and one of the biggest ports in the region. And now, host to the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. So let's take a look at the topographical map of the Jeddah street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Perez, and Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Russell, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher and Pierre Gasly, Ocon, Sonoda, Guan Yu Zhou and Norris, Ricardo, Stroll, Kevin Magnussen and Sebastian Vettel, Latifi, Anthony, Albon. And now it's time to head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. Ant, it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Okay then guys, so we're on the start finishing line grid, obviously lining up in P20. I'm hoping to maybe gain you know, at least two positions during this race. Uh, I'm not looking for anything too too much here just because we know we sort of know where the car is at. We're gonna do a medium to hard strategy in this one, just keep it simple, and then as the season goes on, we'll start trying to mix it up. If we see ourselves more further up the grid, maybe towards the midfield, we'll start mixing up our strategies and seeing if we can actually benefit from them and actually gain a decent amount of points. But for now, we're going to just stick with the basic. Okay then, guys, so we're coming up to the grid now. And one thing I'm definitely going to be checking over the course of this race is tire pressures. Um, usually I've been just toying around with the tire pressures, especially the fronts, just to see how it affects the tires. Right now, I've kept the tire pressures pretty much at default. So it's going to be interesting to see how much they actually uh, wear compared to other other times that i've tried them out but here we go we park on the grid nice and straight nice and perfect got that purple okay, let's get this race started and see what we can do at jeddah all right here we go guys we've got four five red lights for the jeddah grand prix here on f122 and lights out and away we go obviously with the whole freezing thing which is quite annoying but vettel gets up in front of us it doesn't allow us to to break as late as we want so we're gonna have to be careful going through turn one and two 
There we go. We've gone around somebody. I think it's Danny Ricardo and... Is it a stroll? No. No, it's just Danny Ricardo. Right. Not sure who it is I went around. I think it might have been Kevin Magnussen and Danny Ricardo. But either way, we made up a few positions. Let's see if we can make up any more on these first laps. Kind of need to be super aggressive like Fernando Alonso in real life. And try and make, make up some positions here. Because our pace is not amazing in this car. We're going to have to be as consistent as we can. Because we're going to lose positions throughout the course of this race. I can definitely see that happening. Oh yeah, you could just see you could just see the straight line speed. The AI right now. You can see Lance Stroll is pretty much gone. Uh, Danny Rick is on my ass right now. <laughs> pretty much on my gearbox. Ready to pass me. So uh, straight line speed is definitely not there. We're going to need to do what we can to upgrade our power unit this this season but i'm thinking when it comes to when it comes to certain aspects of the cars i want to maybe try upgrade one thing more than another um throughout the season and really try and focus on one department don't know if that's a good idea maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section whether or not you feel that's a good or bad idea i'm not saying to completely neglect all the other departments i'm just saying for one of them to be more of the focus so just finish that up the first lap we are in a little bit of a toss-up here with Vettel going side by side into turn one. He breaks a little bit later on us. He's got more confidence in his Aston Martin than we do in our uh, BR001. As we actually almost lost the rear there. That would have been detrimental to this race. Again, having to be super tentative on the throttle or else the car just wants to go. That's just the nature of this first car that we've got in my team. And by the way, guys, let me know in the comment section what budget you guys have started with i know that you guys have been thinking about starting with different budgets i've seen a few midfield seen a few midfield ideas thrown around there seen some people say that they're probably just going to start with the with a newcomer and some people are actually wanting to start with front runner and just win straight away so be interesting to see yeah, you can see that look at danny rick he's gaining time on us again it's just the straight line speed we have in this br001 it's not very good and to be honest i think our power unit is actually the best thing about our car i'm not 100 percent sure we are using the red bull powertrain that's what we've got oh goes side by side here with ricardo i feel as if i wasn't given enough space by ricardo there I feel like he turned in too early hopefully we've not got wing damage we don't luckily we're not in the drs of sebastian as we lock up just a little bit and that's how detrimental locking up can be that's how detrimental locking up can be we just locked up a little bit and we missed the first apex entirely. But I see that there's a little bit of a uh, battling going on, maybe, just ahead of us. If they can continue battling, then that'll sort of bring us in. It is. Oh, look how many cars are here. What's happening? Who's that in front? Whoever it is, it's, they're holding up the pack by quite a lot here, which is fantastic because it's brought me back in DRS. All right, sorry about that. I've just had to actually do a quick re uh, refresh because for some reason, Kevin Magnussen behind me just completely just knocked me over and just didn't care that I was there. So it's quite annoying. That's one thing I hope sort of gets nerfed or fixed or whatever. The AI just not caring that you're there. Like sometimes they, they, they understand you're there. Like if you're going for a move, they'll move out of the way. Other times they'll just bump into the back of you and not give a crap. Okay, we go wide there. That's going to be a bit cautious. Oh, thought I was going to lose the car there. So easy to lose the car. On this year's game at that corner, if you're not careful. Alright, we've got Magnuson. He's going to go around the outside, I believe. Maybe not. Oh, Lando Norris is heavily locked up there. And he's lost the position to both Aston Martins. That's not ideal for him. We might actually be able to use our ERS to maybe think about doing something here. Okay, come on, Sebastian. We need you to go faster through the apex than that. There we go. We managed to squeeze our way through past Lando Norris. I'll happily take that. I'm still not sure who's at the front. I think it is an Alfa Tori. Whoever they are, they have sort of brought us back into this. So I'm super grateful. All right, come on. Don't want to lose. Don't want to lose the RS to Sebastian just yet. I think it actually, yeah, it's Yuki Sonoda. It's definitely Yuki Sonoda. He was the one that was holding up. I think that's Zhou Guan Yu with him as well, who's finally managed to get past. Or are they side by side? Looks like they're side by side. Both Aston Martins also looking to make the move happen. Oh, they're going super slow because of this battling. This is fantastic. It means that we can actually get up in here and maybe make up a position or two, which would be great. Magnus is also going for it. I'm going to try and use the slipstream of the Aston. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Kind of locked up there. That was, that was terrifying. I'm not going to lie to you guys. That was terrifying. 
We broke a little bit too late trying to get past Sebastian. And we almost, almost lost the wing on his teammate. So they're both going slow, they're battling through turn one, two. So are we technically. But yeah, you can see that Sonoda is definitely the slow one here. So it will do us good to get past him as soon as possible. Okay, yeah, right now our chassis is definitely very, very poor. We lost a lot of time in that corner. Magnuson is going for it here. Let's use a little bit of ERS because we don't want to going side by side through here having to be super cautious on the throttle going through that corner because if if you slam on the throttle what's going over that curb you will spin out you will bottom out so you just gotta just gotta hold back a little bit and we have lost quite a lot of time just overall from all of that yuki is now looking to get outside of our drs which considering he was the one that was holding everyone up it just shows how slow we are if, if someone that slow is is actually gaining time on us yeah Mark saying that we have dropped some time to him as we lock up again. We're just breaking a bit too late in this car. I'm using the braking points as if I was in equal cars, and that's not good. Because overall, you're just going to lose time that way. Magnuson is looking to make the move. I can definitely feel the frustration from Magnuson. We've held him up for quite a while at this point. Oh, we've made up quite a lot of time from that corner. This is fantastic. Please, can we stay in the DRS? Of good old Yuki, we can. We've just passed the detection zone and we were within that second. This is beautiful. Oh, Lando Norris is slowing down. He is already behind us. So, to be honest, that's just more of a reassurance than me feeling good. It just means that we can keep at least one of these positions. Trying to defend from Magnuson here. He's still trying to overtake us. He's, he's having a terrible time doing it. But he has gotten a great exit here. His, this could be his chance. To finally get past us. But it doesn't look as if he's got the straight line speed with us having DRS. He goes up the inside here. Leave him leave him enough room. Oh, I can feel the frustration from Kevin right now. He must be fuming. Oh, that's perfect. That that could be the difference between us being in, in DRS and not being in DRS. I saw that little slide from Yuki. Yes, let's go. It's going to make it even harder for Magnuson to get past us. Again. We are losing time to Yuki, so I think Yuki's starting to find his stride. His momentum. Alright, here's Magnuson trying to go around the outside once again. Going into the final corner. DRS is just about helping us here. Honestly, DRS has saved us numerous times already. I'm trying to use a little bit more ERS just so that we can... We can stay ahead of Magnuson. I'm liking this right now. I'm liking the pace. Oh, what a beautiful first sector. We're three temps up and we've gained like four temps on Yuki. This is brilliant. This is a great lap. If we can keep up that momentum throughout the next couple of laps, we should be in a very, very good position compared to the guys behind us. Hopefully. All right. For the <laughs> for what feels like the one millionth time, Kevin Magnuson is trying to overtake us. But the DRS just once again proving to be very beneficial for us. Especially since Yuki's sort of in that perfect range. We're not really gaining too much of uh, that, yeah. Right, come on. These are the guys that I'm sort of racing against here. So, I might think of going for an undercut. I'm not actually sure when the pit window is. There we go. We just we command that corner. We just let Magnuson know we're not lifting for you. God damn it. We tapped the wall on the exit of that corner just now. So I actually think we've got wing damage. Yeah, we definitely have wing damage. Going through that corner, we definitely have wing damage. And we can't even speak to Mark right now. I don't know why. Mark's not available. We've got wing damage. I wanted to be 100% sure. But yeah, I think we've definitely got wing damage. Which is going to be very, very painful for these next couple of laps. Not necessarily in terms of turning. That'll be fine, obviously, with the new cars. But it'll just be overall damaging in terms of pace. Honestly, I think our exits is really really good right now i think that's literally the difference between us losing the positions and us not losing these positions i say that i say that as we have a terrible exit there but you get you guys get what i mean i mean we're still in the drs of yuki which is in turn helping us against magnuson and vettel because it's given us just enough straight line speed to defend against them and we're saving a little bit of ERS as well which is great okay here we go pit stops Going to be pitting in this lap. I'm assuming the rest of the guys around me is going to be pitting as well. Like Yuki, like Vettel, like Magnuson. 
Oh, maybe not Vettel actually, because Stroll is ahead and he seems to be on the same strategy as all of us as well. So Stroll being not that far ahead might actually be helpful for us because that means Vettel will need to go another lap and he will lose out through undercut. So we've got super wide there. Didn't mean to do that. It's going to lose a little bit of time. Luckily, our straight line speed plus ERS seems to just be enough to hang on once again. In terms of pace, I think it's been solid. There's a yellow flag. Ooh, Mick Schumacher is out of the Grand Prix. He's ahead of us. We're going to get in position. Let's go. Mick is out of the Grand Prix. He's the first retirement. And right now, our pace compared to my teammate is clearly very, very good. Once again, I have DRS to thank for that. But here we go. Final DRS zone before we pit. Going to use up a little bit more ERS here. We are going to gain some during the pit, so why not? It'll just allow us to get just a little bit closer to Yuki. And here we go, into the pits. Yuki's not going into the pits. We're going. And boom. Brilliant. Let's go. Going to be pitting for the hard compound tires here. Now, <sighs> I'm wondering how the hards are going to feel. Going to have to be super careful coming out of these pits just because cold tires, they're not going to feel great. This first sector is going to be absolutely abysmal. Especially since you need that mechanical grip. But yeah, look how early we broke and still went a little bit wide. Wider than we uh, would have wanted to. Come on, tires. We need you to heat up. We need you to heat up. Going to use up a little bit of ERS here because we have lost a little bit of time. I think we lost in total maybe about a second this lap. The AI is just very good on those cold tires compared to us. Oscar's in the pits. So I'm going to assume that Magnussen... Not Magnussen, sorry. Vettel is also in the pits. Let's see where we come out compared to him. Has he managed to overcut us with the amount of time we've lost? Yes. Yes, he has. Vettel has overcut us. I think going into that left-hander at the beginning of Sector 2, that's our only chance. Going to use some ERS. We're making this move happen. There we go. Up the inside. And boom. Oh, Vettel's going for a switch. Come on, come on, come on. This is literally our only chance. I feel like if we don't take this chance, Vettel will. We'll fly away. There we go. Well, we don't really have anyone to give us um, DRS, though. That's the only issue. So, as much as this battle is being fought hard, it's not like we're going to be able to keep the position for very long. Especially if we don't have Yuki in front of us giving us that DRS, giving us that slipstream. So yeah, I can see Vettel taking us over right here, right now, actually. With Danny Rick in tow. Goes around. Break just a little bit earlier than him. We actually managed to get DRS. Let's go. We're going to use my ERS here. We broke just a little bit earlier than we usually would. And we managed to just sneak DRS from Vettel. Is Daniel Ricardo absolutely sending it. Oh my god. What is he thinking? Hey, we're gaining a little bit of time here. The hard starting to come into, into their own. I feel like graining is actually a thing in, in, in this game. At first, the tires will feel horrible. Then they will sort of grip up a little bit as you get temperature. Then they, will feel, then they will feel a little bit worse. And then they just randomly get better and you'll randomly start getting temps just in different places. It happened at Silverstone. It's happening here. I know I'm using my ERS as well, but I'm not using it as much. So I definitely do think that with this new tire model that they've got on F122, that graining is a thing. If not, then that's really weird. Now, we're not really going to be able to carry on this pace, I don't think. Because we had DRS on our fastest lap, didn't we? No, we're still gaining time somehow. Well, our pace is pretty solid compared to the guys behind. But out of the DRS from Magnussen and from Ricardo. I think it's because they're battling, though. If we could just keep up the consistency. Then we should be good. As long as they continue to battle. And that's all I can answer. Because the more they battle, the more I can get away. Yeah, Kevin Magnussen is now back inside the DRS zone of us. Ever since he stopped battling with Ricardo, he's really been quick. Kind of wish that Ricardo would battle with him a little bit more. That would have given us enough time. But alas, it's not meant to be. As here he comes, and it's not really going to be easy to defend from him. Not only is he much, much quicker on the straight, but with DRS, he's getting an extra probably 15 to 20 kph. Here he is, even even with a pretty decent exit, he's still gaining time on us. Come on, 
So the RS is going to be super powerful. We're going to stay on the inside, try and defend. Oh, just couldn't break as late as him. I wonder if the RS will help us. We'll see. Use a bit of BRS as well. Not really, no. We just wasn't close enough. Okay, so we've got less than five laps to go now, actually. Well, roughly about five laps, including the next one. So now that we've sort of really lost touch with Kevin Magnuson, our goal is to be as quick as possible for the rest of this race so that we don't lose a position to Yuki, Sonoda, and Sebastian Vettel. Roughly about four seconds and roughly about five seconds, respectively, behind me. Which means they will need to be about a second a lap quicker until the end of the race if they want to actually overtake us. Remember, if they get in our DRS zone, obviously that's going to in significantly increase their pace relative to ours. So the longer we can avoid having them in our DRS zone, as we have a little bit of a moment on the exit there, the better. But that's actually good. Sebastian Vettel and Sonoda are fighting. So even though we had a moment... We still actually gain time on them because they were battling. This is great. This is great. We've made up a lot of positions. Our pace to our teammate has been very solid as well. The entire weekend. I can really... I can really go back to the, to the factory, essentially, and have my head held high with this race. Compared to Bahrain, I felt with Bahrain, we were just way too slow. Compared to everyone, including my teammate. But here at Jeddah, it's completely different. Yeah, I must say that uh, I mentioned in my previous video about I wonder how ERS usage and saving ERS is going to be on this year's game. And so far from what I've experienced, it's definitely easier to save ERS because we've used a lot of ERS this race. And with four laps to go, we've got 40% of battery. So either I'm just somehow even better at saving ERS than I was on F1 2021, or it's just simply easier. So I'm thinking of the latter. Because I was, I was pretty decent at ERS usage last game. But I don't think we should have that much. I think it's just generally easier, especially with our car, to save ERS. Oh, what a moment. Oh, my heart sort of jumped into my stomach there. Oh, no. We've hit that wall. We could have wing damage. Now, I thought I had wing damage before, but we didn't. Oh, I'm looking at these cornering speeds. This isn't looking good. We can't speak to Mark. It looks like we've got the wing damage. Still got a couple laps to go. And if we do actually have slight wing damage, this could bring Sebastian Vettel and Yuki Shinoda back into play. I don't want that. P14 would be a very, very good result for our car. Honestly, other than that incident with Kevin Magnussen towards the beginning of the race where he just completely yeeted me, we've been pretty lucky this race because I feel like We've had a little bit of taps on the wall. And we've gotten away with it. Um, probably due to the fact that we're not using simulation damage. If we were using simulation damage, we definitely would have had a broken wing. But still, I feel, I feel like that was still hard enough hitting some of those walls to get wing damage even on standard. So um, I'm pretty lucky here. But either way, we've only got a couple laps to go. Vettel's not made up that much time. Still got two laps. He can get into our DRS here easily. He is significantly quicker right now. I think he's using a little bit more battery, but I think we might have done enough or if we can continue. Oh no, we went super wide there. That's not good. If we can continue to have decent laps for the last two laps, we might have just about done enough to Sebastian Vettel to keep this P14. Come on, two laps to go. We need to be consistent. Well, Vettel is really, really quick now. He's fully pushing. This might be a last lap battle for this P14. I'm trying everything I have here. I'm trying everything I have. But this is definitely going to be a final lap battle for this P14. Between me and Sebastian Vettel. Because he is just absolutely rapid right now. Come on. We can do this. This has, been a, this has been a good race. We've not really battled a lot of people over the course of this race. But we've had a few battles. We've held up a few people. And our pace has been pretty solid considering where our car is at. So... If I can get this P14, that'll be icing on the cake to all of this. Our teammate, he's been lapped already, I think. Either that or he's just towards the back. He's not really been able to do much this race. All right, Sebastian is 1.1 seconds behind us in Sector 1. Now, I do think Sector 1 is my weakest sector because the car just does not turn in. 
However, that doesn't mean that we're not still weak in Sector 2 and Sector 3. Oh, he's within DRS. We need to use our ERS here. We cannot allow him to be in DRS. As we get a bunch of fastest laps here. Lewis Hamilton with the fastest lap. Charles Leclerc with the victory. He's carrying that momentum from the last race. Oh, that was a beautiful corner. But I think he actually did get DRS. No! This is, this is going to be down to the wire, guys. Down to the wire. He's got DRS on us. And he's going to have it pretty much up until the straight. Took that corner just a little bit slower. He might get us here. And so might Yuki. I'm definitely going defensive. We're definitely defending this position. Here comes Sebastian Vettel. It's like Spa. Here comes Sebastian Vettel. We show him the long way. And we've done just enough to keep V14. Let's go. Oh, that was intense. the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix to a close as we reflect on the team's impressive performance today. What do you think it was today, Ants, that gave them the edge over the competition? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Okay then guys, so they gave the driver of the day to Charles Leclerc. I feel like I've been robbed there, just because we had a pretty incredible race ourselves. But anyway, Charles Leclerc, Mike Verstappen and Sergio Perez are the guys who round off the podium, followed by Lewis Hamilton with the fastest lap, Carlos Sainz, Fernando Alonso, George Russell, Valtteri Bottas, Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon rounding off the points in general. And then we have Zhou Guan Yu, Lance Stroll, Kevin Magnussen. Then ourselves, we just couldn't keep up with Kevin Magnussen, he was too quick. And then Sebastian Vettel with just about done enough to stay ahead of Sebastian Vettel and Yuki Tsunoda with Danny Ricciardo, Lando Norris, Alexander Albon, Oscar Piastri and Nicholas Latifi rounding off the finishers with Mick Schumacher being the only person who didn't finish the race. Let's see what that does for the standings now. Right, so you can see that Charles Leclerc is now 13 points ahead of the reigning champion Max Verstappen followed by his teammate Sergio Perez. Obviously, we've not got no points, so we're not going to really move up. However, we had have finishers above some of the other guys like Mick Schumacher, like Alexander Albon. So we are ahead of them in terms of the actual constructors. Once again, we don't have points, but we have finished on top of Williams. So yeah, that's, that's, that makes sense that we're moving up against them. Uh, Alpha Tori is currently the only team, uh, sorry, the lowest scoring team with Aston Martin, McLaren, ourselves and Williams being the only teams not to score points. Ferrari is now 11 points in general ahead of Red Bull and 38 points ahead of Mercedes. So let's go back to the factory, see if there's anything else to do and end the video off there. Okay, so as we were coming back into the factory, we actually got minus $10,000 in damage reductions, meaning that we actually did get wing damage through that race. So the fact that we managed to keep Sebastian Vettel and, um, God, who was it now? Yuki Tsunoda behind us with wing damage. That was a great race from us. But in terms of factory stuff, I think all we really need to do is just continue our upgrades. Uh, the car engine is looking pretty nice right now. So yeah, we'll we'll do all that off screen and then we'll show you what we've done in the next episode. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click any of the videos that you see on the screen right now. I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you guys in my next one.